Um, stone artifact notes, you might want to elaborate on the stone artifacts found. You might say something like mostly silkrete flakes found, but a, a small percentage of CCS was noted. Okay. And then the manufactured artifacts, you might have some pottery, um, maybe even some historical artifacts, but let's stick with just pottery and um, ostrich eggshell and then uh, details of cultural material. You might want to elaborate on that. So, um, uh, ochre burnish on the pottery shirts. Okay. Then back to top. All right, let's complete the rock art section. Very easy. The details of rock art, you can expand that field. This is generally used on most recording forms. It's where you write out verbatim the descriptions of the rock art. Um, we've retained this field for compatibility backwards with previous recording forms, but the this particular group that I'm recording for um, is now has now moved to the new recording, which notes the, the rock art by um, motif and describes it in a list format. This makes it a lot easier to summarize the rock art found and to, to add the male figures or fine line figures and so on um, and store, draw your statistics from those at the end. Whereas the, the memo fields, you can't do that. This also helps us to filter the rock art database um, by various categories much later on. Um, the damage, uh, you can note if there's damage to the rock art. This only applies to rock art, the damage. Um, bird droppings, maybe some vegetation abrasion. Uh, let's pick that. Okay. Um, if you want to explain something in, in addition to the motif listing, you may in the details of rock art. And there might be a comment. Um, note the inland torsos particularly faded. Um, okay, um, it might be a general comment um, that elaborates on on something you, you didn't fill in on the on the panel um, listing, the motif listing. Um, let's do a typical motif listing. So we can write the panel. You can generally break up the site into two meter panels, but it's it's an open field, so you can break it into 0 to 1 if you want, or um, go straight to 6 to 8. There's no need to record um, where images aren't um, on the rock panel. Um, and then the number of images, this, is a, this ties into the motif. So if you have uh, fine line male figures, you can group them if they're the same motif and same tradition. But if you had a finger painted male and a fine line male, then you need to break up it, uh, break up the motif listing into two lines. So we might have something like this: four fine line uh, males, um, monochrome, red facing right, or we could even add two of them are facing left, two of them are facing right, and so perhaps they grouped and facing each other. So we might have that. And then equipment, that's the, the equipment they have with them. Let's add another item. Let's choose a cross, perhaps, and then a single curve bow. So that would be SCB uh, or just the bow. Okay, if they had triple curve bows, then you could choose triple curve bow. So let's stick with a single curve bow, it's the normal bow class. And then, yes, this is if there's super, posi super positioning involved. Um, if the images don't have to specify which is on top of which, but uh, here you would just check whether they're superpositioning or not. And um, the size, if you want, you could say um, you know, 10 centimeters um, and uh, perhaps 10, 15, and 25 would apply to those figures, but uh, it's an optional field and generally only used when there's something specific you'd like to remark on in terms of the size. In the image note, the uh, this gives you the flexibility to add uh, quite a detailed uh, description related to this motif, um, which goes beyond the uh, definitions you've already specified. Um, so we might say um, um, males face each other 
two on left, two on right. Um, generally same size, something like that. Okay, uh, it's meant to be brief, um, so don't write too much there. Um, and then as you move through your sheet, just add another item. Ah, oh, picked the wrong one, sorry. Um, add another item. And then you move on to your next one. So this might be in the same panel. And then this time we've got one. And finger painted, let's say an intermittent human, monochrome, and let's make it a black image facing in an indeterminate direction with no equipment and leave the size out and we'll say um, um, splotchy indeterminate figure um, splayed hands okay right you get the idea so you just keep adding to the list as you um, complete the motif listing um, and then you can either save and come back to the site to complete your images or um, you can move straight to the image field. Let's upload some photos. We're just going to use some demo photos again. Um, so we'll pick out those ones and we'll upload those and then on the end we've got attachments and that's where your site recording form um, is normally uploaded or any other documentation um, which might be relevant to your site recording. Remember in the first tutorial we covered how Saurus resizes your images back to 800 by 600. I did not resize these images before I uploaded them therefore I'll, I've actually wasted a bit of time so I've uploaded these uh, photos which are about three times the resolution that which will be that and which will be stored on Saurus um, and therefore it just took more time and the system is already um, resize these images and you'll see a message pop up here about the resizing there we go so the good tip is always to resize your photographs in something like Microsoft Pix Picture Manager or Mogrify and Ubuntu before you upload always keep your original photographs on a separate drive um, so you retain your originals and um, it's up to you to have some sort of backup uh, for your original photographs. There might be a point where we have a much lar larger data cache for original photograph sizes, um, but this is still being investigated at this, this, this stage. You uh, are given the opportunity to specify names and metadata to your photographs. Um, this is again optional. If you've named your photographs, clearly this is usually not necessary. But if you don't name your photographs and leave the default numbering system on your camera, then specify additional information in these fields so that it's easier to, to find uh, what you're looking for when you browse through the photographs. Then the last step is to upload your site doc. Um, this field here is an open field. It will come up in the Apache Solar Search, so just be aware of that. Even though you might be hiding your uh, site recording into a group, if you upload anything under Site Docs, it's available on the search. Um, so if you are uploading a sensitive site recording with GPS coordinates, then rather use Secure Docs. Um, this field doesn't allow access um, in the Solar Search. So um, but the drawback of that, of course, is that only the uh, uploader, the author, and the administrator have access to that file. So even your group members will, won't necessarily have access to that file if you use that field. Um, but that works quite well for PDF. So you capture the site um, with your site recording, and you know that it's uploaded and saved, but um, it's only if something goes wrong then you can retrieve it and make it available to other people. So let's do that. Let's choose a file I've just saved to the desktop and I'll upload that and save that PDF to, to the site. And that's it. That's the end of the um, site recording. So let's save that. And you'll see that we'll return back to the site and we'll have a um, site recording in the table next to the, the site. So there's a selection of the images. This allows only four images in this block. If we go back to the site recording, if we had more than four images, you would see them all listed in this block over here. Okay, let's 
call that the end of that, that chapter.